Hi everyone, welcome to part one of this tutorial where we're going to look at extracting data from a Revit project. Now, many of you may be familiar with um, tools like Dynamo and so on. In this example, we're not going to use Dynamo. We're going to keep this real simple. We're just going to use ODBC, which is Open Database Connectivity. The end result is shown in Microsoft Power BI. And you can see here in this example, I've got a visualization showing our structural materials used in the project some of the levels set up, the various different wall types that we've got, structural framing types based on the volume and the oversized members, i.e. the members that are too long to go on a low loader, and so on. And all of this data can obviously be consumed by non-Revit users, and that's really the beauty of this system. So our first step is to create an Excel file that's going to hold all of our data. So start up Microsoft Windows Explorer, we can navigate to the place where we want to store our data. In this example here, I'm just going to use my desktop. And here, we can then go ahead and create a new file, in this case, a Microsoft Excel worksheet. And I'm going to call this one Data Extraction from Revit. OK, so that's our Excel file created. We can now close down Windows Explorer. The next step is to set up the Microsoft ODBC database. On the Windows taskbar, type in ODBC. You'll note here that you have two versions of this. You have the ODBC data source 64-bit and also the 32-bit system. In this example, I'm going to assume most of us are using Windows 10, in which case we'll be using the ODBC data source 64-bit. In the Data Source Administrator, go ahead and select Add. In this example, we're wanting to create a data connection to a Microsoft Excel driver. So let's go ahead and select this and click Finish. For the data source name, I'm going to type in Data Extraction from Revit. Here, we need to go ahead and select our workbook. So we'll select Workbook. And of course, this is the workbook we just configured. So in this case here, I want to go to C, Users, Lawrence H, and Desktop. But of course, you can navigate to wherever you've uh, saved your file. And in here, I'm going to use revitdataextraction.xls and click OK. I can click OK again to the Microsoft Excel setup. And you can now see that we have our new driver ready to use. So I'm going to click OK again. And now I'm going to switch into Revit. So here in Revit, we're going to use a sample file for this. So I'm just going to navigate back to the main ribbon system. And here we'll select File. We'll pause over Open and select Sample Files. This is a structured example here. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, RST Advanced Sample Project and we'll go ahead and open that. So this sample project just has a few columns, floors, walls, and so on, and a bit of structural framing as well, as you can see here. And we're going to extract all of this into an Excel file. So let's select File Ribbon, Export, ODBC Database. So in the Select Data dialog box, select Machine Data Sources, and then you can go ahead and select Data Extraction for Revit. Go ahead and click OK. Here, we need to confirm the file that we want to write this data out to. So in this case, it's Data Extraction for Revit, and that was the file I set up on my desktop. But again, you could have set that up anywhere in your file system that you required. And go ahead and click OK. There will be a slight delay while that data is written out to the Excel file. And now we can go ahead and view our Excel file. So here we are in our Excel file. And you'll notice that the first worksheet is blank. Um, what we need to do here is every single category has been written out to a tab, as you can see at the bottom there. So in this example, uh, first thing I might want to look at perhaps might be uh, levels, for example. So we'll scroll along until we find levels. And if I click levels, you can now see that we have the element ID for the level, the type ID, the name, and the elevation that, that level sits in. In this case, it's written out in meters. 
Again, if we look further along in the data set, we'll find some of our structural objects. So in this case, we might go ahead and look at perhaps structural framing. So again, we'll scroll through until we find structural framing. In fact, here, let's just look at structural columns soon as we're here. So you can see here that we've got our structural column types. And again, here we have all of the data from the project. So we have the shape used and we have the family name, the type name and the element ID. And also here, if I click structural columns, I have a separate row for every item in the database. So in part two of this video, we'll take a look at how to visualize this in Power BI. Hope that was useful.